Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Listen, this is David Mitchell with Straight From The Source Podcast TV. Also, yes, basketball recruiting service as well. We'll get into that later. But this interview that I have for you today is incredible. The area that I am in now, for those of you who know me, I grew up in Dayton, Ohio, a hot Midwestern city, okay, mid-sized city. When I grew up in Dayton, it was phenomenal. It was a lot of things going on. I mean, in basketball and football and sport has always been. I mean, Dayton is known to have some of the best fans in all of college basketball. It's the only game in town. We're real knowledgeable of sport. But where I find myself years later after my own basketball career is in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Now, listen, if you don't know about this area, that's area, that's why I'm here to educate you. Because all of my friends and followers in the Midwest and beyond will start to know about this area if you don't already know. You may know some of the sports figures and some of the big names, the Allen Iverson, okay? Uh, Boo Williams, the chairman of all of AAU basketball uh, in the United States and in the world was on my show. This gentleman that joins me tonight basically runs the Boo Sportsplex, the facility of the, the, that houses the number one, where it started at, right here in 757, all the AAU basketball with the Allen Iverson team, the Joe Smith, okay, the Alonzo Mourning of the world. And just most recently, uh, in this year's 2021 NBA draft, a first-round pick from the 757 right here, uh, Cameron Thomas. Absolutely. With the Brooklyn Nets. Absolutely. Listen, this gentleman, I'm I'm just going to get right into it. He is not only a boys' basketball coach, he is a girls' basketball coach. Okay? That in these days and times is sort of rare to find a coach that has a resume as my next guest has. Okay, this coach boys and girls as well as AAU basketball. Okay, he's been around phenomenal coaches, which you hear about his coaching tree. I mean, it's just phenomenal. So, without further ado, we're going to tell you how me and this gentleman, I just want to thank everyone at the Boo Williams Sportsplex, uh, Boo, for being on my show. I uh, want to thank everyone, uh, Miss Sonia, his, his wife, um, everyone over there, did just phenomenal, uh, uh, Lamont, uh, you know, uh, Struthers, just everyone over there that I've met, uh, beautiful people, uh, very warm and welcoming. I appreciate learning everything I'm learning from this next man is up. So listen, without further ado, listen, joining the show straight from the source is 757's own Jamar Simmons. You can call him Coach, everybody. Welcome to the show, Jamar. How you doing, good man? Good evening. What's up, Unc? How you doing, man? Listen, I'm, I'm so glad. I appreciate you allowing me. That, 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 that introduction, you know, didn't even do justice to your resume, but uh, I'm glad we're getting here and we finally doing it. We've been hanging out, doing a lot of talking, and I've been trying to stay away from this. But we're here now. Can you tell me a little bit about, first of all, your upbringing, your beautiful mom, and when you first arrived at high school and that opportunity presented yourself to become a basketball manager? Uh. Born and raised right here in the 757, uh, 757 on, as you said. Yes. Uh, Where where do I start? I've lived all over. I grew up in uh, Chesapeake, Suffolk, majority of the time. I graduated from Nansen River High School in uh, 2005. You know, uh, my mom, she that's that's my BFF. You know, she holds (laughs) the kid down. I can go on for hours. We we can use the whole interview, whole podcast to talk about moms. Yeah, but um, you know, she just always supported my dreams and helped make me who I am, and kept kept me on the straight and narrow when I wanted to go look crazy. But uh, 
that's my baby, you know. And we most people feel the same way about their mother. So yeah, she she's a mom's mom. Absolutely. And you guys look so much alike. You look so much like your mom. Oh yeah, I get that all the time. Uh <laughs> people say I'm her twin. Uh, that that's been like my, my lifelong thing. She one thing about it, she can't deny me. <laughs> no, no, absolutely, no. mama. You know you can't deny. Uh, uh-uh. yeah. no, you cannot. Listen no, to know, good or bad. She, she, she got to take. She got to take claim to me. Absolutely, Jamar. Now, listen, Coach. Tell me a little bit about. Okay, we know about your upbringing here in this area. When you were growing up, when you wanted to start getting into sport. And you got in as a manager of the basketball team. And I know I met personally who actually introduced you to that actual opportunity in your life. What was it? Did you realize you was in a hot bed or did you just enjoy uh, teaching? Uh, I just love the game, man. I, mm-hmm. If I wasn't a severe asthmatic, I, I would probably be a basketball player. Yeah. Uh, I'm five seven and I wear a size thirteen shoe and component basketball. So somewhere yeah. along the line, uh, I didn't get the height that was required. But most importantly, my my lungs, uh, you know, w- wouldn't allow me to play. So and I've just been a sports fanatic since a uh, youngin. You know, um, James Boyd came out of Indian River, Jason Capel, Indian River grad, Allen Iverson, Ron Curry. Those was like my favorite guys coming up. Mm. five six seven years old like i friday nights i'm standing up just to see their highlights to see what they did on the football field basketball court um joe smith was one of my childhood heroes when he got selected number one the only thing i wanted was a joe smith jersey you know absolutely i I had to hide joe smith i had the allen iverson georgetown three um so as once i got to high school um it was pretty evident that i wasn't gonna be an athlete because of, you know, my asthma. So uh, I was fortunate enough to always be exposed to good basketball. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Nansen River, when I was a kid, uh, was really good. They won back-to-back uh, double-A state championships in the mid-'90s, led by Antoine Willie, uh, Corey Hart. Uh, Leroy Skinner was on that team. You know, it was just so many guys and coaches where – at Nansen River, and the way they played was just really, really interesting. So uh, I fell in love with Nansen River and basketball at Nansen River probably in the fourth grade, I want to say. Mm. And uh, as I got older, we moved back to Suffolk, and I was in high school. We had uh, one of my good friends, even to this day, Marquis Cook, was ranked 39th in the country, and uh, the basketball team traveled on the holiday, mm-hmm. like when Christmas break came, the basketball team was on the road going to like Myrtle Beach and Raleigh and all these places up and down the East Coast. And I'm I'm a kid. I like to travel. Yeah. So I honestly got involved initially because I wanted to travel to these, you know, holiday tournaments and be around the game, see some of the big recruits. And then mm-hmm. um, I just always had a relentless work ethic. And that transformed uh into something else and it's funny because i wanted to be the varsity manager i was a sophomore in high school and um i i went to the varsity head coach at the time was franklin chapman you met coach ed young yes he, uh was actually my coach my senior year so i only got to spend one season with coach young but i went to coach chapman and you know he's one of my coaching heroes one of the people as a man i just look up to um to this day and he sent me to Coach Mason, who's the JV coach, um, another one of my coaches that I still got a strong relationship with. Uh, we talk probably about two, three times a month. We got some other things coming up the pipeline that we want to do together. Mm-hmm. And Coach Mason sent me to one of his assistants. So like, I'm getting rung, rung around the school just to be the manager. And uh, they sent me to go see Coach Godet. I go see Coach Godet. He's like, hey, if you can stay back for practice and you can be the manager. And so, you know, I called my mom. Like, hey, mom, I need to stay back. I want to, I'm about to be the basketball manager. She's like, all right, as long as you got a way to get home, I'm cool with it. And uh, 
long story short, the rest is history. I, I managed uh, the JV team for half a season. I'm in the cafeteria out of school one day, kind of goofing off, you know, mm-hmm. being a teenager. And uh, Coach Mason comes in into the cafeteria. He's like, hey, Jamar, I need you to come with me. And I'm like, oh, man, I got caught being crazy. I'm, I'm really a good kid. But, you know, you get around you guys, you, you do what you do. And yeah. uh, we walk in. And he's like, uh, I'm, I'm thinking he about to really get in because, Coach, uh, if you've been around Coach Mason, especially during those times, like, a lot of times you might not even think coach like you because he always got this this scowl on his face, this look like mm-hmm. he about business. So for a long like till that day, I really didn't even know Coach Mason liked me. <laughs> and uh he's like, uh, hey man, you know, I appreciate everything you've done. I'm still thinking, like, dang, I done got cut. And he's like, uh, you know, Coach Chapman need a manager. So you're gonna spend the rest of the season with the varsity team. He was like, Man, you know, you've done a good job. And, uh, you know, just approach it the same way you did with us on the JV team, on the varsity team. And uh, I started working with the varsity team. I got what I wanted. Uh, we went to, I want to say Raleigh that year. Mm-hmm. Myrtle Beach. Maybe it was Myrtle Beach. I don't know. Beach ball classic. Um, and it, it was just one of those things. I didn't even know how much value I was bringing to the team. Coach uh, Chapman came in one day. He was like, man. They called me fresh and uh he's like fresh, you know, I usually watch the games on mute because I don't want to hear what's going on in the stands and what, what people are saying. Mm-hmm. You like you be up there coaching, man. He was like, I actually listen to you up there when I'm watching the film at night. He was like, keep mm-hmm. doing that. And uh, you know, my my interest in coaching just grew because I got to see it from a different um vantage point in practice. You know, I'm on the side, I'm keeping stuff on the clock, I'm paying attention to what the coach is doing, how they're instructing. And uh, my passion for the game just grew from a whole other side. I always loved playing. But um, that, that took me through my sophomore, junior year. And then my senior season in high school, Coach Chapman became an assistant principal at the school. So um, in Suffolk, they wouldn't allow you to be an administrator and coach at the same time. So he uh, resigned as the varsity basketball coach and, Coach Young, Coach Ed Young got hired. Uh, and if you see Coach Young, he can be intimidating if you don't know him because he, he got that bodybuilder physique. You know, he got his hair combed back like an Italian mobster. Oh, man. I don't know if I want to go approach this dude and tell him, hey, I've been the manager for two years. I still want to be your manager. So uh, I approached him like the first or second day of school. I'm like, hey, Coach, you know, I'm Jamar Simmons. Uh, I've been a manager. I would love to be a manager if, if you need one. He was all for it. Uh, and those five months I spent with him are probably the five most valuable months I've spent in my career uh, because those those months led me to going to college. And, you know, he asked me one day, he's like, hey, man, where you want to go to school at? And I'm a really smart guy, but I ain't always attend to my academics the way I did. And I'm like, Coach, I'm going to ECPI, you know, or ITT Tech. And he said, no, 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 no. What, what what college do you want to go to? And I said, Coach, I really – I just want to go study computer science and do that. He's like, no, nah, man, you're too good at what you do. Um, and basketball, not to go do something. He's like, you can get a scholarship for it. I never knew that managers could get scholarships. So mm-hmm. uh, he said, you know, go get your transcript. Let's get the grades right. You get your grades right. I'll call anybody you want me to call. So he said, while you get improving your grades over the next couple of weeks, um, find out some schools, find three schools you want to go to. And uh, I, I've always, I'm a diehard North Carolina Tar Heel fan. So I've always been obsessed with basketball in North Carolina. And uh, I've always been like interested in, in basically infatuated with like HBCUs. You know, I used to watch the CIAA tournament on TV back in the 90s when Ben Wallace was in school, Derek Bryant. Hey. Derek Bryant actually came out of Nansen River. Uh, he, he was another one of those guys that played in, at Nansen River in the 90s and early 90s. Uh, so I found three schools. My schools were Elizabeth City State University, Shaw University, and Johnson C. Smith with uh, the latter of the three being the one I really wanted to go to. 
Um, remember, I, I said I ain't really attend to the academics the way I was supposed to. So I had right. applied to C. Smith as a, just a general student. And I got a denial level. They they didn't want me. Um, but when I gave Coach my list, he started making calls that day and every day thereafter. Uh, I mean, literally every day after school, the first thing we did was get on the phone and call coaches. And he sold me to these guys, man. Sean Walker, who's uh, still at Elizabeth City State, was the head coach there. He still is the head coach. Uh, coach Mike Bernard was at Shaw. And Coach Stephen Joyner Sr., who's still the head coach and athletic director at Johnson C. Smith, was at Johnson C. Smith. And uh, Coach Young, he would just call him. He would sell me, hey, I got a kid. He's a senior, hard worker, bring a lot to the team, can get it done, make your job easy. he get him on the hook. Like he throw the line in, he get him on the hook, and he as soon as he get him on the hook, he like, but he go to catch. He's not a player, he's a manager. And they're like, oh, well, but all three was really receptive. Like Coach Walker had never had a manager at Elizabeth City. Um, so he invited me down for a visit. We went down, met with him and Coach Dunk. Um, I never took a visit to Shaw, but Coach Bernard, he he was with it. Um, mm -hmm. and then Johnson C. Smith, we was in contact mostly with Coach, uh, the assistant coach, Mark Sherrill, who's now the head coach at Fort Valley State. Mm -hmm. And Coach called him every day, hey, all three of them, every day until they said yes. Um, and I never heard him say yes in any of the conversations of what we called. So one day, I don't even know what was going on because we didn't have practice. It must have been after the season. Um, I'm driving home phone ring it's just like we just had first got cell phones My cell phone ring mm -hmm. I pull over to the side of the road i'm like hello it's a 704 number it's coach Cheryl. and he's like hey man uh it's coach Cheryl from johnson c smith and i just want to be the first to say congratulations on being a golden bull i'm like coach you do know that um i got denied like three weeks ago to come to the school he's like that's why i'm calling you i'm calling you to congratulate you on becoming a golden bull i'm like what he like, man, you coming to Johnson C. Smith. We, wow. we got you in. You coming. I'm like, I'm Woo! ecstatic. I'm literally on the side of the road. I'm ecstatic, man. And uh, I graduate. I, I go to Smith as a freshman. I'm the head manager of the men's basketball team. Uh, that experience was just as valuable as those five months I'm telling you I spent with Coach Young because I was in charge of everything outside of coaching. <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it didn't have nothing to do with the X or O, I was probably taking care of it. Film has changed. Uh, I was getting the meals organized for us on the road. I was probably tying up like the last loose ends with our hotels, ordering all the gear, the procurement. So, you know, just being able to be in those meetings and just learn so many different things in the game on the other side of the game was just invaluable um, halfway through that season. Coach uh, Ed Joyner Jr., Coach Buck, who's the head coach at Hampton University now, he come to me because he was assisting us with the men's team at Smith and the women's yeah. team um, at that time. He was like, hey, Jamal, you know, we don't got no manager for the girls, for the women's team. You mind coming over helping us after you finish with men's practice? And uh, I got with it. Coach Vanessa Taylor, she was the head coach uh, at that time. And – it, you know, just that time of, of being the manager of both teams on the college campus, it, it was huge, man. Um, and built lifelong relationships from high school and college. And those are the things that have led me to this point. Um, and at, like I said, even in high school, my love for coaching and wanting to coach grew. Uh, I did two, a year and a half at school at Smith. And then I took some time off. I went back in 2011. And uh, I, I go, you know, I was just popping in the office because I, I had a job at the time, too, at H.H. Greg. I was a warehouse manager. And uh, one day we in the office, we just kind of talking, you know, kids coming in, coming out. Mm -hmm. And uh, Coach Taylor kind of dropped it on me that I was going to be on the coaching staff that year with the women's team. Because this is about four to five years after I originally arrived at Johnson C. Smith. And uh, that's how I began my college coaching career. Wow. You and know we, what? Uh, Go ahead, finish. That that season, we went 22-7, and seven, I want to say. We lost in the CIAA tournament championship game. 
We met uh, First Lady Michelle Obama before our semifinal game. Wow. We went to the NCAA tournament, Division II tournament that year. Lost to, I want to say Gannett, up in Pennsylvania. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Just had some really valuable experiences, man. Great people just, that just invested in me and helped me be who I wanted to be. Yeah. You know, I appreciate you sharing that, you know. You introduced me. I want to interject there right now. What you said about how you felt growing up as a young kid, getting into the game, and Coach Ed for that particular year, you learned so much with Coach Ed Young, uh, whom is the head uh, Division Five coach at Nassanon River. And let's congratulate them. Matter of fact, were you running the Boo Williams Fall League? Uh, uh, in name of Ben Moore. Listen, the champions are for this year, you guys, 2021 Fall League is Nassanon River. We won't give a shout out. The kids perform very, very well. I was there to witness it, and I appreciate Coach. He gave me a few of the players that he wanted me to look at and uh, and, and scout uh, potentially to help them get into school, and I appreciate you for that. He is a, a figure. He had me up that night. I was looking at tapes and everything after I met him, you know? Yeah, he Listen. might not tell you, but he, he a legend, man. Uh, Coach Young, he, he won a state title in 1988 at Suffolk High. Uh, yeah. And he had some of the, the greatest players to come through Suffolk on that team. Tony Smith uh, was on that 1988 state championship team. He went on the fight for I want to say Tony scored close to 3,000 points. At Pfeiffer mm -hmm. during his college career, um, mm -hmm. Coach Jones coached at Quinnipiac, um, Mount Aloysius Community College up in P PA. Um, he's been at Norview High School here locally, Green Run, and then he's been at Nansen Road the past 15, 16 years. Um, he's won well over 500, might be over 600 by now, games. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's my guy. He's one of the most humble people you can meet. And uh, he's a tireless worker, you know what I mean? Got a heart of gold. And, yeah, I mean, he's, he's just always done right by me. Yeah, I appreciate it. That's my guy already. Listen, I, we also want to just make sure because we got a lot to go over, and those coaches are going to come back up. But while the beginning is here, we definitely want to shout out uh, Ms. V Coach Vanessa Taylor as well as Coach Ed Buck Joyner. You already know. Uh, yeah. Hampton, you know, right here in the backyard. Now, moving yeah, right along, it. can you tell us now a little bit about what you're doing at the Plex as well as get into a little bit about your – you're the owner of Fundamentally Fresh Sports and Entertainment as well. Can you speak a little bit about those, what you're doing now? Definitely. Um so from 2005, not 2005, 2015, excuse me, to 2020, I was uh, a marketing rep and event operator at the Sportsplex. Uh, I created Fundamentally Fresh Sports and Entertainment in 2017. And uh, I, I, well, I left the Sportsplex full time in about 2018. I went into the school system, mm -hmm. um, got into the education side and started coaching at Booker T. But uh, now what I do, I just manage events that come through the Plex. But um, mm -hmm. me and Boo, we, we got a great relationship. So a lot of people, when they see us, they think I still work in the building full time. But it's more so partnership now where um, a lot of events that come through the Sports Plex, I manage. Uh, and a lot of them that come through, we as Fundamentally Fresh Sports and Entertainment, we uh, staff them. So with the Ben Moore Fall League, um, Coach Moore, another coaching legend from the area, um, rest in peace. Yes. He coached at uh, Warwick High School, Mitchville High School, Did uh, had a couple of stints over at Virginia Wesleyan College, uh, which is now Virginia Wesleyan University. He ran the Fall League with Coach Young mm -hmm. um, up until his untimely uh, demise. And once he passed away, you know, of course, Coach Young, myself, and uh, Coach Paul Hall, who was also a Nansman River my senior year, 
Um, we wanted to continue to fall lead. We didn't want it to be something that fell off or died just because Coach Moore couldn't be a part of it anymore. And we saw it only fitting that we named the fall league after Coach Moore, being that, you know, him and Coach Young were the two brain children behind the league. Um, so uh, any anything I can do to make that league be sustainable and continue to go on, I will always do it. Um, because Coach Moore, he was probably one of the most selfless people you could ever meet. And that's not a cliche or something cool to say for the internet or for the public. That was real life, you know. Mm -hmm. If one of his players called him at 11.30 at night and was in need of anything, he was going to help him. He was going to get out stop what he was doing, and he was going to help his player. Um, so that that's one of the things that we, we do. Um, and I do that from a personal standpoint of helping run that league because that's just what it mean to me and what in the short time that I knew coach Moore, what he meant to me just being able to see him you know be as selfless as he was but uh with fundamentally fresh sports and entertainment we got great clients and great partnerships um of course our partnership in with boo and summer league uh we do a ton of scheduling um Myself, I'm one of two people in the Eastern Time Zone that's certified by Exposure Events as an Exposure Certified Professional um, to schedule on that platform. For about three years, I was the only person. Now it's myself and Alex Wilsbacher, who uh, has served in some roles with AAU basketball. He still works with AAU. He's just not in the basketball department anymore. Um, we got a really really strong relationships with with big shots basketball out of myrtle beach south mm -hmm. carolina which is uh owned by jeff snyder and his son kevin snyder bryce snyder we uh direct media and multimedia for hoop group um on the girl side with their hgsl league mm -hmm. so uh, we do a lot of stuff up and down the east coast with hoop group and then uh we we got other clients uh cap city basketball cap city ballers and shining stars academy is another one of our um big time clients we've been working with them for quite a few years and uh that that's really the gist of what we do but we we <laughs> specialize in management event management anything that you need from a management standpoint whether it's staffing scorekeepers time of scores officials um actual event personnel scheduler Anything that you can put under management when it comes to an event, we should we do it and we do it at a um first class rate. And then uh multimedia, uh, as I said, we are direct and take care of multimedia for hoop group in that HGSL lead. Um that with anything that you see just about on the hoop group girl site, we we got a a piece of it when it comes to the events during a the week, they got kind of take care of their own stuff. But um, that's another pillar of what we offer. And then uh, consulting, we offer first rate consulting, and whether it's an event, a schedule, um, individual talent, we, we help and go that way. One thing I really take pride in doing is helping young kids through the recruiting process. Um, and that's just kind of me paying it forward uh, as to how my coaches treated me. Uh, as we said earlier, with coaching, I'm calling coaches every day and just getting me to where I needed to be because at the time that he, he brought it up, I, I just wanted to go be a computer scientist. But uh, he saw some things, some other things that could be fruitful for me, and I'm glad he did. Look, you, you, y'all heard that right here on straight from the source, you are witnessing a young man who is just now approaching, right? Listen, his 35th birthday, y'all. We're going to give him an early shout out. His birthday coming up soon. Listen. Yeah, Trey Pound. You understand? You understand? I'm like an uncle to him. When he gets up in my age, I mean, there's no telling what the story how much more someone's gonna have to write because i got so much right here prepared in my hand that we ain't even covered yet okay his resume is really uh 
uh, warm and fascinating, uh, to say the least. Listen, let me say a little bit about what I have on paper here with for you, okay? Listen, guys, not only is you know he's a businessman, and, and he learned a lot of his business, he give all that uh, to his toolage with uh, the chairman of AAU, Boo Williams, you know, teaching him a lot about business. And, and then you, you know, you were at Princess Anne High School, girls basketball, varsity assistant coach, special education paraprofessional as well through the Norfolk City Schools for about three years, girls basketball, JV head coach and Booker T. Uh, Williams High School uh, for about another additional three years. Of course, running the bootplex for you know since I believe at least 2015 or so, and then when you look at what you do with the AAU, okay, not many coaches, nephew, have coach boys. This is what I find so fascinating: coach girls, coach AAU boy girl, you know, managed, run a big 14 million dollar facility. And then running the business that you're doing. I mean, we love to give flowers when flowers are due right now. And you getting them right here on Straight From The Source. We getting ready to blow this. You know me and you doing some things. That's We could go on forever talking about that. But we getting ready to blow this 757 up in a way that they haven't seen yet. Because you just getting started. You just getting started. Um, let me continue on on your resume. You was also the junior varsity head coach over at Granby High School. Um, you was the assistant varsity uh, assistant coach over at Indian River. You've also had the 14 and under AAU um, uh, category out in Suffolk County uh, with the Rebels. Um, You've also worked camps and things. One of your mentors was Shaka Smart, who I love because he's, I know he coached at the University of Dayton over there, and he's from Ohio and went to VCU, and he's still coaching Texas and doing wonderful things where he is now. You have did that relationship with him with camps. Um, man, what else I got on with you here? Hold on. Johnson C. Smith, we already went into what you did over there with the HBCU, um, your school. Um, well, you started as a volunteer manager over at Hampton University and your relationship with Coach Buck. I mean, come on. I mean, just incredible right here. Coach Buck joined um, where you managed there as well. And then, of course, you were at Nassimond. Um, managing as well. Let's see. And then in terms of, let me see, did I miss anything? And of course, we know about your education between two schools, between Johnson C. Smith and Hampton University. Man, that's a nice resume there, nephew. That's a nice resume. Now, what is it? I know you one of those that seek greatness. Give me one of your final one goal that you have that you haven't reached yet in youth sports. In youth sports? In youth sports. That I haven't done. That you haven't. You've done a lot. You got a lot more to go. The, the only, I can't say the only, but one of the major things that I haven't done in youth sports is – run a full circuit yet um that that's one of the things that i one of my youth sport goals is to uh excuse me run run a circuit um uh, a platform where we it could already be an established platform eybl um you got the nike eybl circuits out there for the boys and the girls mm -hmm. um you got adidas got the three stripes um circuit mm -hmm. Under Armour, I've been involved with them a little bit in the past. Um, I think it was 2017, 2018. Uh, I was a part of the inaugural Under Armour Girls Association um, in the Under Armour Futures. But that's that's probably my one of my youth sports, youth basketball goals, is to just establish a circuit 
for um, girls basketball in, in 2022, where we have about four to five stops throughout Virginia um, and giving girls, youth, youth girls teams, another platform to play on and be exposed. Um, you know, a lot of the, the Nikes and the Adidas and Under Armors, those are elite circuits. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like the intermediate kids and the independent club teams need some circuits and some platforms to play on as well. And Hoop Group, Hoop Group has a really good independent circuit. Um, they That went off without a hitch last year. Uh, Nepa Elite wound up winning it. But uh, just having those strong relationships and being able to pick people's brains, whether it's Boo Wims uh, with the Boo Wims Summer League, Matt Pooley with Hoop Group, Jeff Snyder with Big Shots, um, mm -hmm. even uh, Rick and Kobe Lewis with Phenom Hoops, uh, Star Wheels with Cap City Ballers and uh, Shining Stars. I was on the phone with her earlier. We, we was bouncing some things around. Um, so, but I, that's one of my goals in youth sports. Um, while we're talking about goals, I, the, the one thing I really want to do is bring a professional basketball team at some point to the Hampton Rose area. Uh, we got seven different governments in this metropolitan area that can make it a little bit tough. Uh, but I think at some point over the next 15 to 20 years, we, we can get some things together and make that happen. Uh, you know, my motto is dream out loud every day. That, that's mm -hmm. who I am, the dream out loud every day guy. So it, I don't think there's nothing out there that's too big or too lofty uh, that is unachievable. <laughs> Jay-Z once said that uh, difficult takes a day, impossible takes a week. And uh, I firmly believe in that. Wow. I appreciate you sharing that. I'll be right here with you seeing it all come true right next to you, because That would be incredible for us to have something like that on that platform. You know what I mean? That would be huge for the that's, community. That's the one thing this area is missing is uh, – Pro sports, you know, we, we yeah. got a, a decent entertainment scene. We got pretty good nightlife. We get mm -hmm. just about every major tour in some shape, form, or fashion come through mm -hmm. the area. But, um, you know, having lived in Charlotte multiple times and being able to go to a Panthers game or a Charlotte Hornets game, it's nothing like being able to do that um, during the week or on the weekend and just kind of get that – hands-on experience of what we see on tv and uh, see your favorite stars at the highest level wow you know your career sound i appreciate you sharing so fascinating that you know i appreciate being able to you know be next to you and learn as well it's just been you know phenomenal as you guys are listening he just going off the list to list. So this is like, check, I'm an entrepreneur here. Check, I'm an entrepreneur there. Check, I'm an entrepreneur there. Contact us if you want to do this. Contact me. These are the type of individuals that, like, like okay, let's give a shout out to, to some more staff over there. Like Jalen Donahue. You know, Jalen Donahue. Young Jalen. Phenomenal young man coming up the ladder, learning, sucking up that knowledge from you and Boo. You know, I, I want to shout out also hello to Miss Karen. Welcome you coming in the door with the tickets. Miss Yvonne over there. You know, I know I didn't shout out Boo and Miss Miss Sonya already, but just the whole staff and Lamont Struthers over there, former NBA and overseas basketball star. What is it like working with that staff? Working with Jalen, working with Boo, Miss Yvonne, Mom, I call her Mom Sonia, everybody over there. Tell us about what it's like working with them every day because they're so humble. Yeah, it's like going to your favorite uncle's house. You know what I mean? Uh, that that house where you, you just get to go have some fun, be who you are. Uh, the, the staff is it, so many people, man. Uh, of course, Boo, you know he none of it's possible without him but the history of the staff is, is so deep and for me um uh, when i got involved in 2015 uh boo's mother miss patricia williams she was heavily involved um 
Miss Pat Kovass, uh, God rest her soul. She yeah. she was one of the first that took me in. Miss Peggy McKinnon, uh, Terry Lewis, Robert Lewis, um, even now to our custodians, John and Miss Paulette in the concessions. Uh, yeah. My man Maxwell, my, that's that's like my big brother. I you know I had a security. Um, our officials, we had JJ Foster, Adrian Motley, Jamie um, Taylor running our officials back then. Just everybody, me coming in as a young buck, uh, 2015, I might have been 29. I was 20, 29 at the time. Um, and you know, I'm from the area, but I really wasn't heavily involved with the summer league prior to that time. Um, and just coming in, bringing a skill set, you know. Them accepting me. Uh, Jalen's mom, Wanda Donahue, she, she's been a big, big part of the summer league and its success over the years. Um, and she's still involved to this day. You know, it's just so many people, man. And that's just from the staff inside. Then LaVon, LaVon Merrill, she became my facility director in 2017. I might be a year early. It might have been 20. It was 2017, I believe. Um it is a family. It is definitely a family atmosphere. Um, and even to this day, you know, not I don't work in the building every day anymore, but when I'm there, it's, it's just like being at home. You know, I still get to go in the office that I was in. I, I still can log into my computer. I still got a mailbox, <laughs> all that stuff. So, um, you know, to sum it up, it's, it's just a family atmosphere, man. And that, that was one of the ways that Boo built the summer league was through – the people that he was close to, his mom, you know, uh, Mr. William Brown. I got to shout him out. He, he's a, a legend, you know. He, he is a legend. He was an official. He was one of the first black officials to officiate in the ACC. Uh, he has tremendous uh, officiating contacts. He's another one that showed me tremendous love, guided me, you know, kind of catch me on the side. Hey, you know, you stay with it. You, you should go do this or you should go do that. I'm a tail boot, you know, um, that support was, was phenomenal. And I, I got it from just about every corner. Um, Lisa Nady, who runs the Nike tournament for us uh, in April or every year. It's, it's just a, the people you see, it, it's, it's not a whole lot of turnover where, you know, it's ever evolving. So just being there and being able to learn the business there was phenomenal. Um, boo. I told Boo when he hired me, and it, this is funny. I, I've never told this story. Really, a lot of people don't even know how I wound up at the Boo in Summer League. Um, I was the assistant director of one of the club organizations in the Summer League, Norfolk Express, with Miss Adrena Ford, the godmother of that girls basketball in Hampton Roads. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had a tournament. She called me about two to three weeks before the tournament. Hey, Jamal, you know, I need to get some more teams in. And... Uh, we, we just started working and we made it happen. And then we had to get the schedule done. So she was, she was like, uh, you're going to have to do the schedule. This is the first schedule I ever did. And uh, I did it on pen, pencil and paper, like literally square line here, line here, line there. Then I made my, my rows and I scheduled the games. We had, I want to say, 60 to 70 teams in that tournament. So we went to go meet with Boo late one night. Uh, probably about 10 30 11 o'clock it was late uh so we sit down we, we go over all the details this is june of 2015 and you know boo say all right y'all got it let me see the schedule so i pulled the paper out of my bag and i slide it over to him he look at it he go through it he took about 10 minutes he, he fine tooth comb it. he said i don't see but one mistake and it was just a, a flip um he was like you good with computers I'm like, yeah, like I'm a computer geek. <laughs> you know, you're like, so why did you do it on paper? I was like, it was the quickest way I could get it done in the time that we had to, to really make it make sense. He was like, all right, take it home, um, put it on the computer, send it to me. And it, it, that's a funny story because anybody who knows Boo, know Boo got a flip phone. And he telling me, go put it on the computer. <laughs> like, you good with computers? And send it to me. So oh. I went home. I put it in the cell. But while we was at the meeting, he tell he he like looks at me. He said, "Hey, I want you to come work with me." And I said, "Okay, you know." And he said, "I'm serious." And I said, "Okay." Like 
I just, I just had the same expression, but on the inside, I'm going crazy because I'm like, man, Boo Williams want me to come work with him, it's, but I'm playing it cool, you know what I mean? Like, I'm in mm-hmm. hell. Okay. And he didn't even think I was serious about it. He was like, no, nah, I'm serious. I'm like, okay, Boo, me too. He's like, no, nah, Jamal, I'm dead ass serious. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious too. And uh, that was the mm-hmm. say, I want you to start in October. And I when I started working with Boo, I was working three hours a night, three nights a week. Right, it's about mm-hmm. nine hours a week, and uh, about a f- couple of months in, he say he just bumped me up, and it, it was a time where about a two year stretch I was with Boo all day, every day. You know, Boo owns a state farm uh business as well, absolutely. And, and I was I began working with Boo at State Farm during the afternoon, and then we was at the sports plex in the evening, and um, that's how my role and you know, my input and my influence within the organization grew. But, you know, during that time, everybody that was involved just supported me. They, they saw my strengths. And uh, like Miss Kovacs, she used to always say, um, I know a genius when I see one. And, and uh, it, it meant a lot coming from her because Miss Kovacs, she don't take to everybody. Now, she she like you and she love you. She with you. She going to push you. But. She ain't up under everybody. She ain't patting right. in the back neither. When you screw up, she let you know, like, mm-hmm. you, you done messed up. <laughs> and yeah. she had the utmost respect of um, everybody, man. You know, even guys that's still in the NBA and some NBA legends, like, they they wholeheartedly love Pat G. Kovacs. And um, she, she was a big part of making me believe that I was good at it. You know, I, I just was doing what I naturally knew. But she she was the one that was like, yeah, nah, you get it, you you really got it, and I'm gonna make sure Boo know. <laughs> so um, it's just a a great experience, and, and having those people in your corner, like they go from colleagues to being family, you know. Um, Absolutely, Robert Lewis is like a, a real uncle to me. You know, I call yeah. him for real life advice and things of that nature when it's certain things in business I want to get accomplished. I call him like, hey, I need you. You know, he, he dared a drop of a dime. Like, it's real right. love. Like, me and his children, we tight. You know. Mr. Lewis, I had to say something. Let me please on this one. The first time yeah. I sat down and, and, and spoke with Mr. Lewis, me and my wife was in the office, right? And it was like, and you know, when COVID came, and what happened, right, over there, and, you know, a lot of things shut down for a while. I tell you, right. it was just amazing, man. You're right, amazing man. And uh, I, I look to uh, – I haven't spoken to him in a little while. I, I look forward to speaking with Mrs. Lewis. He really, really uh, educated me, gave me a lot of the game on – on Hampton Roads and the history of the peninsula and the South. And the, he took me through all of it. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that's my guy, man. He he a legend in his own right, you know. And yeah. he, he created what he do. Um, it, it, it's, it's so many, man. It's so many people that's involved with it. And that's why the Summer League is what it is. That's why the Sports Plex is what it is as well. It's just good people who, you know, go to work, they tighten their belt, and Get it done. Execution is worship. What about, talk about, tell us about some of the, we know I shouted out some of the, they know about some of the local stars and some of your basketball guys. You started growing up saying, oh, wow, the Joe Smiths and the Allen Iverson. Tell us about some of the stars you've seen come through the Plex that are notably that made it. And then some of them that came through the Plex that people may not know about as much that were phenomenal as well that's boys and girls and take us all the way down to your most recent in 2021 with our first round nba pick uh cameron thomas you having to say cam listen if you shoot one more jumper i don't know if i'm gonna get no sleep tonight i gotta get out of here shut this gym down Talk it, to it, it, it's uh it's a long list of people who's come through man like you, do you want kids that played in the Boo Wim Summer League or just th- that have come through the play? Just period, it's, it's, because we know it's in the Um, Man, we've seen some of everybody. It, you know, we talked about my my dream of bringing a protein to the area. Um, 
we get to see the pros before they pros. Um, that that's one of the like legends and things of the Boo Williams Sportsplex is when the Nike EYBL come through, we get to see the Harry Giles and the Bam out of Bios and the uh Quinn Cooks when they before they get to Duke, before they get to right. Kentucky. Um it's so many, man. It, it's crazy. Carl Anthony Towns has played at the Sportsplex. Uh so many. It, it, I, I don't even Matt Coleman, uh Cam Thomas, uh Keontae Johnson, and I'm just going back chronologically. Um you put me on the spot with this one. There's a ton of guys, man. <laughs> you know, we got we got me and major guys, Mike Christmas, Andre Hyatt, um, Anderson Maribel. So many. It's and so, so many. And that's, just, that's just recent, recent years. Uh, and then on the girls' side, you got Shakira Austin, who's at mm. Ole Miss, Megan Walker, who plays for the Phoenix Mercury, um, Fiona Fitzgerald is overseas. Jenny Sims is overseas. Uh, Sugar Rogers came through. She she played probably in the first year that the sportsplex was open. She's currently an assistant coach at Georgetown. She's straight out of Suffolk too. Um, got to show love to the land. Uh, graduated from Kings Fort High School. She's won a WNBA championship. Played with the Minnesota Lynx, New York Liberty, uh, Las Vegas Aces. Uh, who we got Taja Cole, who played at Louisville, Georgia, and Virginia Tech, played overseas. She now runs uh, Shining Stars Academy up in Petersburg. It's so many uh, that I've seen. And these are, these are the kids that I've seen uh, in my time of being at the Sportsplex and being around the Sportsplex. Uh, I, I know I'm missing some 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 real killers somewhere along the line. Uh, Colin Sexton was one of my favorites that I saw come through. I always love seeing him compete because he just got that. He's really a, a, a bull. He's really like when you talk about dog, like a Westbrook. Like, he don't got. Yeah. He don't know how to go one way. You uh, know, he all he knows is how to compete and how to win. You yeah. know, I, I love. That's how I'm built. That's how I like guys like that, mm-hmm. girls like that. Um. But with Cam, Cam was just one of those kids. A lot of people may know. I, I don't think a lot of people know, but they may know. Cam took a whole season off from high school basketball where he didn't play in games. He just trained. And over that time, he was in the gym on a nightly basis with Mike Williams, who was one of our assistant coaches at the time. Uh, Mike's down in Georgia now running an AAU program of his own called H2O. Uh, Mike, Stefan Welsh. Uh, who is with Team Loaded now? They they were the guys that was in there day in day out with with Cam and you know his mom, Miss Leslie, was sitting in the gym, no matter how long they wanted to train. But I was leaving at nine o'clock, <laughs> so you know I might give them a little bit of grace period and had to go flick the lights on them, things of that nature. But he just committed himself to being good and great at what he did, and he studied. You know, he studied his craft. And then he took what he studied, he applied it, and then he mastered it. Um, his trajectory is just is, is just coming off the ground and is already at a high level. So the way he's going to continue to soar is going to be phenomenal, and it's going to be fun to watch him play um, in the NBA for a lot of years to come. Absolutely. Y'all listen. Y'all keep an eye out for this young man. I mean, basically tore the summer league apart this year, right here from our 757 from Chesapeake, uh, Cameron Thomas, uh, uh, right here up under the Boo Williams tutelage. And uh, my man right here, Coach Jamar Simmons. I mean, going to do phenomenal things in the NBA. What about some of the coaches? And go back old school because we talking about Hampton. Tell us about Allen Iverson. When AI come through the plex, what is it like? Joe Smith. Yeah. And them yes, boys, Alonzo Morning, and all of them. They my heroes. They they my childhood heroes. I can talk yeah. about them guys all day because <laughs> the way I talk about these guys who are, you know, the young guys that's playing at a high level, when I thought and wanted to be an NBA player, these was the guys I was looking at. Allen Iverson and the way he just played hard every play, he sacrificed his body, you know, and he was short, but he could jump. Um mm-hmm. I probably got the wingspan of somebody about six one, six two, 
although on five seven so it helps me look like i can jump when i jump up in there i can touch the net little short fat guy jumping up getting almost to the rim um but um Allen, he came back and when he started his Allen Iverson round ball classic, he actually held the practices and a lot of the media days at uh, the Sportsplex. I want to say that was 2017 or 2018. Um, it's always love. Like, you know, we call him Bubba Chuck. And most of the people from the area, when we see him, we, we just show him some love and, and keep it moving, man. Um, because he one of us and he represented us on – the highest level he made us believe we could be anything we wanted to be and that uh anything was possible man you know like he he's on my mount rushmore of, of people when it comes to being successful and going to where you want to go and where you come from because we come from the same same environments the, the same area and um he just been super resilient man and he he's one of the guys that made me fall in love with um the coaching style and the personality of john thompson because and we all did you know i'm a little bit younger than some but i didn't get to see alonzo when he was at georgetown and mm -hmm. the Kim Bay and those guys mm -hmm. you know i'd have seen the 84 game on tape but um allen was the first person to introduce me to georgetown and whenever i could found a georgetown game on tv i was watching it you know we we had a uh, comcast sports net which is out of dc it was called something else back in the day it won't comcast but we would get the georgetown games and mm -hmm. I, I alan was the person i wanted to see uh joe smith you know he graduated from maury which is right in norfolk um uh, i didn't see him when he was in high school i saw him when he was at maryland and he was like the best player in the country but i knew where he was from mm -hmm. and you know i knew what he represented so you know those guys going back to back number one overall in 95 and 96 they they just made us believe you know it did something for the area it, and the boo Williams was the boo Williams summer league was the only au program until 2013 that ever had number one back-to-back -back picks right. uh, with joe smith and alan iverson and then in 2013, Anthony Bennett and Andrew Wiggins in 2014 went back to back from CIA bounce up in Canada. So I think we are still the only program to ever have back to back picks in the U.S. in the NBA draft. Um, Alonzo Mourning, he he's another one that I looked up to. Um, you know, he came out of Georgia. Georgetown, but prior to Georgetown, he went to Indian River High School. Mm -hmm. And in my younger years, I lived like probably a mile and a half from Indian River High School. I went to Georgetown Primary, which is basically like across the street from Indian mm -hmm. River. So I spent a lot of time on Indian River's campus. And I would always hear people talk about how Alonzo played at Indian River. And, you know, I saw his jersey hanging in the gym. Uh, and at the time, he was playing for the Charlotte Hornets. And that was the Muggsy Bowles, Larry Johnson, Dale Carey, Stacey Augman days. Um, of course, Zoe was in the middle, Scott Burrell. And um, that's when I fell in love with Charlotte Hornets because we had a local guy um, on the team, and I saw Alonzo play there. So it's just a lot of deep history in the area, um, a lot for us, especially the basketball community, to be proud of. And – we, we carry that you know that's something we poke our chest out about is hey we, we produce super athletes alan iverson so uh ronald curry and ronald curry was like north carolina all world you know yeah. Yeah, on the football field he he was probably like the closest thing to magic johnson you would ever find because he, he was so elusive and he, he was gonna get the ball in the end zone but he was just as good a basketball player um as he was a football player and you know he played dual sports at carolina as well um uh, that you ever want to get Jalen excited ask him about ronald curry <laughs> they ask him about ronald curry and they got they got a they got a a real relationship too um, you know i'm gonna ask in, you. in real life but those guys they just they gave us something to be proud of aaron brooks michael vick um percy harvin uh Whoa, 
Uh, I probably I think I left Matt Coleman off the list early when we was talking about the young guys, but he's definitely one of my favorites. Um, he he's involved with the Sacramento Kings and their organization now. You know, wow. he played for Shaka down in Texas. Um, so many guys, man. Bruce Smith came out of our area. Uh, is is somebody watching this that is yeah. probably yelling at the screen? Yeah, telling yeah. Me it's so many. They they man, know AI man. and Michael Vick and you know Bruce. You hear, but it's just the list go on and on and on. Now, yeah, let me mention something about Allen Iverson. I had on the show Jermaine Jones, my guy. JJ, like like eleven year NBA veteran, played with Allen in the NBA Finals with the Philadelphia Seventy yeah. Sixers. He said, "You know, this is a little thing, and you know, he talks about it when he arrived in Philadelphia. You know, he only spent two years in Georgia, and in his two years, like he scored as many points. In fact, the only person that scored more points in his first two years than he did in Georgia." Was Dominique Wilkins. Okay. So when he left Georgia after being the SEC first team all everything, Jermaine gets to Philadelphia and he's over there and Coach Lynham is the coach, right? And he said, <laughs> Jermaine said he pulled him aside and said, Listen, all that shooting you're doing while you out here practicing, <laughs> you might as well pick up your bag, take it, and just go. Jermaine said he looked at him like, excuse me. He said, we got a young man here by the name of Allen Iverson that's going to shoot the ball 40, 50 times, okay? So if you don't learn to do some other things, you're going to not have a job. And he told him that was the best thing ever happened to Jermaine because what he did was Jermaine adjusted became a real pro's pro, right? Learned to do everything he had to do. And he started right there in Long Island and went to the finals and lost to the uh, Shaq and Kobe Bryant in the finals. But uh, that's a testament to this great, how good Allen was. It probably even better in football, but that's a whole nother story. Um, yeah, he was magnificent on the football field too. And he, <laughs> he recently, he's it's always been said, but he said it himself on, Shannon Sharp showed that you know he was a better football player than he was a basketball player. Yeah. So, I mean, you got you got what three three time score champion in basketball saying that he's a better football player than he's a basketball player. I mean, you already know how that go. I mean, yeah, I already know how that go. Now moving right along, man. I got so many things in here that I want to ask you night. about. Um, now in terms of what you're doing with your, your, your company, okay, uh -huh. where have you taken your company? Like you say, you like to travel, right? So like name some of the destinations, some of the places you've traveled, not just with your company, but with through the AAU system and everything because a lot of people don't know the game is international nowadays. This is not yeah. something that uh, you just go out here and it's local anymore. Tell us about some of the places you've traveled and some of the places you've seen. I, I done been a lot of places, bro. Uh, Los Angeles, New York City, uh, Myrtle Beach, Orlando, Florida, Prior to going to college, I was in Greensboro, Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, all through Pennsylvania, Maryland, D.C., uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Dallas, Texas, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, all through Virginia. It, it's, it's a lot of different places the game has taken me, and uh, that's one of the things I always preach to the kids is, hey, you know, this game will take you places that you never thought you could go. But the, the thing you got to do, you got to work hard. You know, you got to respect the game and you're going to get out of it what you put in, whether it's on the basketball court, whether it's uh, on the business side, operation side. You can be a commentator. There's, there's so many ways to be a basketball lifer. Um, but you just got to be committed to the grind. And I, I've I'm probably missing some places that I've been. Um, 
Denver, Colorado, <clears throat> Detroit. Uh, there's a lot of different places, man. Just about everyone on the East Coast. I pulled up my Google um, Maps, like you know, mm -hmm. it show you where you've been, your locations mm -hmm. and stuff. Probably about two months ago, man. I had so many red pins. Like the East Coast was like littered with red pins. Um, it's it's crazy. Hey, listen, we won't give a shout out right now to Mrs. Linda Sugar Wugger Mitchell. You know, she said, boy, I tell you, you got a lot of grit. And and, and believe me, you know, you met Jamar and you know, he told you he's seeking nothing but greatness, babe. And that's definitely the case. Matt Miller, we want to give you a shout out. All purpose MVP Jamar. You better believe that is exactly what Coach Jamar is. Corey Hoop and Garner is a coach in Virginia. Appreciate you chiming in, coach. He says, Outside of Boo Williams' program, what's your thoughts on Team Loaded? I love Team Loaded. Um, you know, it, it's Boo's biggest rival, and it was my biggest rival when I, I was entrenched in, in the Boo Williams Summer League. But uh, Ty White, the, the founder and director of Team Loaded, he does a phenomenal job not only on the basketball court with his guys and getting them into college, but he does a good job in the community as well. Mm. Um, and he's one of the people, especially in the state and in the game, that I got a high level of respect for. Anybody that's doing some good for these kids, man, to help them get to where they want to get, achieve mm -hmm. their dreams and be who they want to be, you can't do nothing but respect, that, especially if they're doing it the right way. Exactly. Um, you know, we all get caught up in rivals and rivalries and, mm -hmm. you know, shoe brands and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, what are you doing for humanity? What are you doing to help the community? And uh, I can't never knock nobody that's doing something for the community. I, I And, you know, Boo Williams Summer League, we always held our head on having the most guys in the NBA. Like, mm -hmm. I think in 2017, 2018, the only – only team or organization that had more guys in the NBA than us was Kentucky, North Carolina, and I want to say Kansas. Wow. And we were number four right behind them. Wow. We were really number three because two of them was tied. But um, the one thing that we was always fully aware of was that Team Loaded had about 200 guys in college. And that, that's that's a – hard thing to beat you know yes. um and the, the guys of the number of team loaded guys that's in the nba is continuously growing every year with the nba draft you know you got guys like uh dennis smith jr who's come through um mm -hmm. and you got quite a few guys that's played for boo and played for team loaded don maker bam out of bio keldon johnson keldon i miss keldon when we was talking about young guys who came through the league yeah he's one of the best that's ever come through um, Keldon is with the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah. Won a gold medal this past summer in the Olympics with uh, Team USA. Um, Bam did as well. But uh, my, my thoughts on Team Loaded, uh, I love it. I love what they're doing. Um, I love what they do, and I hope they continue to do it, you know, because that not, that pushes everybody else to yes. that level uh, of greatness. You, you can't be in this thing and don't think nobody going to compete with you. If you just want an easy road, you might want to go do something else. Go play the game on easy. You know, around here we play it on all mad and all pro. Absolutely. Whatever the highest level is, that's what we playing on. Absolutely. I, I You know, I tell people, you know, I'm, 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 I'm scouting now and I'm recruiting. And I'm over at the bootplex and I'm over there with you and I'm talking with coaches and doing different things, wanting to help get these young kids into school first academically, because if you don't qualify through the clearinghouse, you can't play as a boy or a girl. You can't play any collegiate basketball at any level. And I'm trying to help these kids. Uh, most of them are high level, but under the radar is what's straight from the source basketball recruiting service, as you know, we'll be working on together. Listen, let me ask you this. Now, I just sort of, oh, no, I want to give another shout out. I'm sorry. I got a shout out to Auntie. Let me move forward. Auntie Ruth Bullock Chandler, 
Chandler What's up, on roof? is in the house. She's in the building. You tuning in, Auntie. She is so proud of you, Jamar, as she should be. And you are a real superstar. She wants you to know. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's my girl right there. Absolutely. Now, Jamar, do you think when you look at the NBA, now you just explained we got more people in from the boo from our league in the pros than any other league. Okay. What about boo? Is it any talks? I mean, should he be like Jerry West is the emblem of the NBA? Should Coach Marcellus Boo, I mean, well, he is a coach, Marcellus Boo Williams, coach, mentor, leader. Should he be the emblem of the, I mean, as the chairman of all the AAU? I think he should be the, the emblem. I mean, they should make him the emblem. What, what's your thoughts? I, I I think he is the unofficial emblem, right? He might not be unofficial. the logo. You, you might not see him as the logo that is on the website, but when you see Boo, you you think AAU and um, the level of respect that Boo gets throughout the basketball community is unparalleled. He mm -hmm. uh, He's probably the, one of the most influential people in all the basketball when it comes Absolutely. to girls and boys. Um, and it, it's funny, you know, me and Boo can be on the road. We stop at a gas station. Boo will kind of stay in the van or if he get out, you know, somebody like, hey, boo. And, you know, people like, hey, you know, people are everywhere, boo. It, it's just <laughs> who he is. You know, he got, he, he approaching 40 years in the game. He started yeah. boo in summer league in 1982. Yes. And, you know, he started it with 40 players. He had four teams of 10. Uh, he was one of the first programs to, to get a shoe sponsorship. So, you know, he, he the pioneer. He the godfather of this thing. Um, you know, I always tell anybody that that's my OG. That's my big homie. He the best big brother you can have. He the best mentor. Um, cause he gonna, he gonna shoot it straight. He gonna tell you what it is and go from there. Um, uh, and if you want to be good or you want to be successful, you probably should listen to him. Absolutely. You know, it ain't too much. He tell me that I don't listen to or take heed to, um, and there's a lot of things that I pay attention to with him that he don't even know I'm watching. And I just implement in, in my business and, and some of the things that I do. Um, but as far as him being the, the emblem, I mean, that would be a, a great thing. I, I never oppose it, but I think he already gets that level of respect um, in any room that he walk in or where, wherever he is. Cause He's known. I mean, Boo goes to the NBA All Star game every year, and the the people that approach him and have conversations just to say hi or take a picture. I mean, the the normal person would probably be like, "Who's that guy that Doc J's talking to?" Or, "Who's that guy that you know, LeBron is over there patting on the back?" It's it's just he he has the respect uh, from all all levels and all corners of the basketball world. Yeah, you know. This is the thing. He's so humble. And, you know, a lot of times when people at that particular level, you know, they could easily stick their chest out. So when I'm around, you know, all I want to do, hello, how you doing, boo? I want to suck up any little bit of knowledge I can get and we're going to keep it moving. But, you know, I'm just so proud of you, you know, just like like Auntie Ruth, you know, and what you're doing in your career. Uh, it's just a phenomenal Tell me a little bit of story. What was it like with you? You know, I know you've been knowing Coach uh, Buck Joyner. He's like a, a brother to you at Hampton University. Tell us a little bit about your relationship um, together. Um, I know you told me if your car stopped over on the side of the road, you know, Coach Joyner, which yeah, I'm yeah. going to definitely send out an invitation to Coach Joyner because I want to come over to Hampton University. Um, and we talked about some of those things. Tell us about your relationship with Coach Joyner, and then I got a couple other coaches I want to ask you about. That's my guy. That, that's my guy. Um, since I was 17, 18 years old, man, before any of this, before any business, any anything, when I was a freshman in college, that was my guy. Um, 
you know, he just made sure I was always taken care of from day one. Um, if we were somewhere on the road, hey, Jamal, you're going to get up there towards the front. You know what I mean? If we went somewhere and we played in an event or we got T-shirts, we got plaques for – we lost in the CIAA championship game my freshman year um, versus Virginia Union. And, you know, it, it was a heartbreaker because we were, we were winning the game with about four minutes left. And uh, we, we lost the lead. We ultimately lost the game. Mm-hmm. in the championship and then uh the, the women's team we played in the championship that night as well we lost that game so it, it was a tough night for johnson c smith but when we went to go eat um uh, and i hate losing i don't care yeah. what role i play yeah i can yeah. be pouring water i can be recording the game wiping up the floor if i'm a part of something i don't want to lose and if we lose like i'm pissed right and uh Somewhere in the mix, you know, we got plaque, we got run up plaques, um, was presented to us. And between trying to get the equipment out the locker room and get on the bus and all that stuff, I probably I left my plaque, or I don't know what happened. I don't know if one won't give it to me, but we went to go have a post game meal. And when I walked in the restaurant, he was like, Here, he handed me a box. I'm like, What's that? Like, you know what I mean? He's like, It's yours. Like, Shit, you was here. This is your plaque. And um, that's just kind of a summation of, of who he is and, and how our relationship always been. He was like, man, listen, you ain't going to be out here working hard and you ain't going to get what you worked hard for. And um, that was in 2006. I moved back to Virginia in 2007 or eight, And uh, by that time, he was an assistant coach at Hampton with uh, Coach Kevin Nickelberry, who's in a He's on the staff at LSU. He might be an assistant coach this season. Uh, excuse me. And, uh, you know, when I, as soon as I touched down, I called him like, boom, congratulations on the job. I'm back up here. And he was like, hey, look, man, anytime you want to come over, you want to come help us out, you want to travel with us, like, you good. You, you come on. You, you know, you part of this. Um, and I spent that season where um, I volunteered as a manager with Hampton University. Uh, I was working. I won't even go into school. But when I got off work, I was shooting the Hampton, going to practice. Um, I was able to see my first game in Madison Square Garden because of that experience. Uh, that might have been a, another season. But these are the, this is our relationship. You know, he's like, hey, if you come up, I got you. We, right. We was at the game. I spent a weekend in New York City. And, uh, you know, we hung out. I hung with the staff after the game, before the game. Um, I moved back to Charlotte. I went back down there. I was coaching at Smith. When I came back to Virginia in 2013, you know, we just pick up where we left off, man. And Coach did one of the most um, miraculous things for me that anybody ever done in my life. Um, About three years ago, I wanted to get back into school. And he was like, man, you could have told me this when you first came back home. We could have made it happen. And you know, he he put me in contact with the right people, mm-hmm. and uh, I was fortunate enough to get in school and be able to continue my education. And uh, he 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 worked it out for me, man. It was it was just one of the things. Like even to this day, you know, he he just always support me. Um, and it's it's crazy how things come full circle because I actually coached his son EJ for a little while. Um, when he was in, I want to say seventh grade, he played on a AAU team with us. And so you know, my my relationship, my love, respect for Coach Buck is can't nobody say nothing bad about him to me. Man, shout out to Coach Ed Buck. Join. The whole Jonah family, to be honest, because Coach Buck is the nephew of Stephen Jonah Senior, the head coach at Johnson C. Smith for the men's basketball team, and Big Steve, as we call him, he serves as the athletic director. And then um, it's little Steve, Stephen Jonah Jr., is the women's basketball coach. And uh, my my relationship with the entire family is the same, you know, with from Buck. We, we all we all people, man. We all family. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with all three of them um, on their staffs and 
it, you, you just can't beat it. They they won the like the most prominent families in black uh HBCU basketball. Wow, absolutely, man. I tell you, it's so it feels so good to be in this area now at this time in life and what's going on with all the exposure that is now being finally given to HBCUs to be here in Hampton and Norfolk. And to see all of this in our area with our HBCUs, which we do have others in the area, um, it's incredible. Man, listen here. I want to shout out. Listen, let's go down a little bit more. Ronnie Enoch. I mean, apparently you were sleeping on. I'm going to let you tell the story a little quick on that. You got Calvin Mason. You have Tiffany. Apple White in your life, Ray Fair. I mean, Steve, you have well, Steve Jordan Jr. I had Steve in there, Lache Johns. I mean, coach, we talked about Coach Ed Young. Uh, wait a minute, you met your hero, one of them on the lady side, Coach Gino Ariyama, UConn. Just elaborate a little bit on all of that, man. That that list, that that's. <laughs> that's my list. That, that, that's my tribe, man. You know, uh, what's the first name on that list? Is it, is Ronnie Enoch? That's my yes. brother. Uh, that, that's my brother. You know, uh, I'm, I'm a stubborn guy, man. And uh, that that year after coaching at Johnson C. Smith, I had life life happen, right? As we say, yes. And uh, I had some situations, and man, listen, I, I was sleeping in the office, bro. I, you know, everybody left. I turn out the lights like we all out. I'm sleeping in the office. We got the shower yeah. in there. I'm showering in there and uh, I'm kind of distant from the world. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to take care of my, my my life on my own, not ask for no help. And uh, Coach, he, Coach Enoch, he, he, he's like Coach Buck, really. Like he's like the counterpart of Coach Buck. Um, from the time I was a freshman, he was an assistant coach on the women's staff when I was a freshman at Smith. And he just always took care of me, man. Like he just always looked out for me, made sure I was straight. Um, and as I got older during that time, you know, we was working together, but I, I won't, you know, I'm a private person. I won't disclosing everything that was going on in my life. Right. And uh, he pulled up on me one Saturday uh, he called. He called somebody that knew where I was and knew how to get in contact with me. He pulled up on me like, "Fresh, what you doing, man?" I'm like, "I'm in there. I got a pizza. You know, I had ordered my pizza. I'm working on some homework or something." Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm just working. I'm trying to get some stuff done. He like, "No, nah, what you doing, man?" I'm like, "Bro, like, you see what I'm doing? I'm sitting here working." And uh, he like, "Nah, man. Like, you know, I I'm here because I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, you coming to the crib? You know what I mean? He was like." Nah, you ain't, you ain't gonna do this. You gonna come to the crib, uh, slept on this couch, and hey man, he he helped me rebound, and you know he he had a great career. He's still doing his thing. I I talked to him about every week. Actually, we talk every day. He sent me some some motivational stuff, a Bible verse every day. Absolutely, um, that that's that's my man. guy. That, that's my big brother, and uh, that that's somebody else. You you know you can't say too much bad about him to me. Um, because that's family. You know how you how you protect your family. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Calvin Mason, Tiffany Applewhite, Steve Jordan man. Jr., Lachey Jackson. Keep going, Coach, Coach Mason. That that's my guy. I mean, <laughs> Coach Mason, the first coach I worked for. Yeah, wow. I was his, I was the manager of the JV team in high school. And like I said earlier, man, I ain't know Coach Mason liked me till I won't working for him no more. Because uh, we we just approached the job, we got it done. But you know, as as all of us in the coaching industry and leadership, we we know who good and who not, and you know we know exactly. who put in the work and who's not. And uh, he he saw that, you know. And as I got older and as I continued to matriculate through college. Um, Coaches always kept a close relationship, man. We went from pupil, student, or teacher pupil. I'm probably messing up that verbiage, but teacher student to mm -hmm. being um colleagues and now we we friends and brothers, man. Um, you know, he, he's been there through my tough times and 
I've been there through some of his, and we talking. We we got some new chapters we're gonna work on, but those those that list that you talk about of people that I admire and respect in real life that ain't just a basketball thing. Um, Tiffany Applewhite, she gave me my first uh, head coaching job, and it's crazy because her mom, my mom grew up together. They was like best friends coming up, mm-hmm. um, and we really didn't know each other until we were adults. And the story around it was um, the varsity job at Booker T had come open um, at Booker T Washington and Norfolk came open in 2013. So um, both of us had applied mm-hmm. and Tiffany wound up getting the job. I walked in the house one night. My mom was like, you know, Tiffany got the job. And I got other friends, like multiple friends named Tiffany. I'm like, Tiffany, who got what job? <laughs> you know, because she's speaking in a basketball context and i'm like don't none of the tiffany's i know deal with basketball um she was like aunt bell daughter tiffany i'm like okay so you know we was able to link we sat down one night in the gym had a conversation and it clicked like it clicked and she was like hey if you want to do it you can be my jv coach um i, I was a jv coach and we family to this day i mean when whenever I get a job, you know, I call her like, hey, you want to roll? What you want to do? She get one. She like, hey, what's up? You want to come get down? And, uh, you know, she she a great basketball man. She probably the most underrated coach in the Hampton Rose area. Um, she's real humble. You know, she stayed herself, but she can coach her ass off. And uh, she don't get that credit a lot the way she deserves. Wow. You know, just want to give a little shout out. Can you tell me what is it like as far as describing the level of girls basketball from the AAU coming up to the high school level here in the 757 region? It's one of the best girls basketball areas in the country. Um, It's elite. I mean, the the number of kids that come out of this area – is phenomenal, you know, and they they're fortunate enough to get the exposure and play on high levels, yeah. me, especially coming through the Bowen Summer League, and uh, you know, some of them get the chance to play on Boo Seventeen U Elite team, but even the ones that don't, we got great coaches in the area: Leon Kelly, Keith McCray, um, Adrian Webb, Jonathan Wilson, that are all part of. Um, Boost program that helps develop the kids on the high school level. Earl Tabron, they uh, all do a good job in the summertime of coaching the kids. And then on the high school side, we got coaching greats like Donnell Doge, the head coach at Princess Anne, uh, Sandra mm-hmm. Sawyer at Lake Taylor, Shonda Bailey at Hampton, uh, Maurice Fofana, Kings Fork, uh, Calvin Mason, he was on the girls' side at Nansen River. Um, Vanessa Starks does a good job over at Ward. Um, and I really admire the coaches that develop. You know, we, yeah. we all can coach kids that got the skill, which yeah, we do that at a high level too. But um, Vic Rosado, he does a good job at Lansdowne High School developing yeah. kids. Um, so that's the piece that the kids get the benefit from the most is the kids that come through the programs and are able to get good coaching during the school year. And then they roll that over to the spring and summer on the AAU circuit. Um, it just, it happens here, man. This, this is it. We, you know, it goes like that to is the, you know, the boo and sports place. I like to refer to it as the Mecca of grassroots basketball, AAU basketball. Um, it do go down, and we we just always had high level kids on both sides, girls and boys. Woo, I tell you, I feel so blessed coming up in Dayton, watching the flying to the hoop tournament, the Eric Hortzman's tournament, the founder there, a friend of mine, seeing all the national talent from all over the world, all the high school major players and all. But it's so much young talent out here. Those kids that don't make the cut, even at Boo. A lot of them can play and still go on to colleges. And I think that's one thing that inspires me and inspires you as well as we've talked in our endeavor to, you know, to help these kids, you know, get scholarships. There's still a lot of talent out here. 
No, it's a ton of talent, man. And as I said in the, the previous question or answer, is just the coaches that can develop is is the important piece. Yeah. Uh, another young coach that does a good job of developing the kids at a really, really young age is uh, George James. He's probably one of the younger coaches in the area. Uh, he coaches at Green Run, and then he runs uh, an AAU program of his own called YKS. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I mean, YKS is one of, one of those programs that is on the rise and, and to be reckoned with. Um, it's, it's just – it's something in the water. And it, I know that's a cliche <laughs> thing now with – you know, the DC documentary that they did, but something in the water is really down here. You know what I mean? Yeah. As, as to why for real named this festival um, after that Monica. But we, we just, it's something about this area, man, that breeds elite athletes, you know, whether it's baseball, basketball, football, you know, we, we got those kids and, and we got those natural gifts. Wow, this and entertainment too for rails yeah. from here, Timberland, Teddy Riley doing a whole new jack swing was out of this area. Um, not the the producer Missy the Elliott, producer, Missy Elliott, Bink. So it's, it's a ton, Lex Luger. Um, but it's, it's a ton of musical talent, comedians, area, Chesapeake. Um, oh lord, real funny from Chesapeake, uh, Jay Farrow, Jay Farrow. Yeah, Jay Farrow, you know, he, he's like an A-lister now. Yeah. It, it, this area just breathes excellence, bro. Man, man. I'm glad to be around excellent. It's something in the water. And me and Sugar Wooga, well, we, we right here sucking it up, you know. And it's it's been a pleasure. Before we go, let me say this to you. What else for the average person, if they just came over, you know, I know there's a there's a big track at the Plex for people that just want to exercise. What other activities do they offer outside of basketball um, over at the Plex? Uh, Bull offers a walking program uh, on Monday to Friday in the morning mm -hmm. for uh, seniors. I want to say it's 65 and up. I could be wrong. Okay. I think if you look on the Bullion Sportsplex site, it'll give you that information. Um, and then he has the multi-purpose room that people can uh, rent out for birthday parties or any kind of, you know, social engagement. Yeah. Uh, you can have meetings there or whatever whatever you need a, a multi-purpose room for. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's that in the facility. As well, and outside of that, is it's usually just some kind of athletic event. Okay, I appreciate you uh, sharing that uh, because you know my wife. There's a number of her girlfriends. They like to do walking, and uh, I'm gonna tell them they can go on over there and get on that. It's like a it feel good walking on whatever that particular. Yeah, material. it's from six to ten a.m. Monday through Friday. Yeah, um, Mr. Al. Al, Al Morrow runs the coach Al. Okay. Um, he's usually there in the morning facilitating that um that piece of it. And then before we close to what about the training program? I know that that uh, um uh coach Lamont uh Struthers is doing a wonderful job over there uh with his training program uh christopher newport former star and portland trailblazer dallas maverick fame and, and 10 years overseas uh hope to have him on the show as well tell me a little bit about before we close we must have phenomenal training the reason why we produce so many coaches like brian stith over at odu and you know and, and a list a lot of coaches tell us about the training uh, there's a ton of good trainers in the area, you know. Brother Strut, cut this shit up quite every, every, every. That's Strut, <laughs> that, that, that's my man. Uh, that's big bro for real. Um, he, he does a lot of individual training at the Plex, but um, we, we got a lot of high level basketball trainers in the 757. Uh, Ant Gates runs uh, Train Academy over in Norfolk, he does a fun, wonderful job. Ronald Davis does a good job. Him and um, uh, my man name was passing me by, but they, they do the eyeball twenty four seven uh training. 
uh, Terrell Allen down in Virginia Beach uh, with the Wave Basketball Program. He, he's another key figure that has uh, helped me tremendously as an entrepreneur and what, what I do on, on the business side. But on the basketball side, he, does, he has some training going on as well. Uh, George James, like I said, he does a good job developing the young girls, Keith McCray. Uh, he's like a post doctor. Um, Jonathan Wilson does a good job developing guards. Um, there's so many. Danny Brown does a good job. So it, it's like the area is what it is, and we're rich in, in the skills and what we do because we got the people across the area that can, you know, get you better. And uh, but Strut, Strut is in, he's a gym rat. He, you know, he's a gym rat. He's in there probably five days a week, six days if he can, you know, and he teaching, he teaching fundamental stuff, man, how to, you know, follow through on your shot, how to elevate on your shot, how to protect the ball when you're dribbling. Like he, he precise, he gets surgical with it. Um, Stefan Welsh does a good job. Uh, he's the head coach at Woodside, played at Arkansas. Um, I'm probably missing some people that's gonna cuss me out because I ain't say their name or give them the love. Oh, Shonda right. Bailey does a good job with post players. Um, yeah. She's one that I, if I got a play, I send her one of my players to, to, to train and develop, and I trust mm-hmm. that I'm gonna get them back. So uh, it's just a lot of people in the area that that put in good stuff, man. Wow, I'm just so blessed to be in this particular business and to be in this particular area and to be able to partner with you and do some things in business that we're going to be doing. Man, I'm so proud of you, nephew. Listen, man, we chopped it up, you know, for about an hour and a half. The good part about this, now we're getting ready to distribute this over to YouTube. We're going to distribute this over to Twitter, um, Pinterest, um, uh, and some other uh, platforms. Listen, you, I'm proud of you. You know, your mom did a wonderful job, your family, uh, um, and, and everyone that you've been under. That's why you seeking this perfection in this particular, uh, 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 and your goals that you're setting, you're reaching them in your career because you surrounded yourself around good people. And that's what people don't realize. I mean, how are you going to get anywhere out here if you're not around the right individuals that can take you where you need to go? With that yeah, being that's what said, they gotta do. 757, stay tuned. Y'all already know. Listen, it's going to be, I'm just so glad to educate the people around different areas of the country, man, about what's going on out here. We can ready to take the podcast. You know, we talked about that to a whole nother level. It's a lot of things we're going to be doing out at the Sportsplex. Y'all stay tuned. We're going to help these kids. We're helping the youth uh, and running basketball camps and clinics. And we're going to change the lives of these young individuals because the game now it's gotten to the point where you have to start mentoring these kids from, I mean, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, before they make a decision on what middle school. It's gotten that deep now, uh, everybody. But it's been fun chopping it up with you, nephew. Give a shout out to Trotwood Madison High School, by the way, y'all. Y'all, I had to do this in Dayton, Ohio, because Mars, Jamar's girl. Y'all ready this? Jamar's girl is from Dayton. I mean, you know, so we got like a nice little bond thing going here. And uh, just wanted to shout out to Mrs. Man and your whole family. As much love, your uncle here. Appreciate you, man. Listen, we go get together soon. I'll probably talk to you tomorrow. Uh, much love. I appreciate you. Much love. Shout out to Trywood Madison. Love you, people. Madison in the house. Appreciate y'all. Go Rams. Appreciate you, Dayton, uh, Hampton, Chesapeake, Norfolk, you know, Suffolk. Um, I'm not, I'm Williamsburg. Who am I forgetting? Portsmouth, you know. Portsmouth, Portsmouth um, Chesapeake, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Hampton, Newport yeah. News, Smithfield, Franklin, Smithfield. Windsor, Windsor, Hangstown, Williamsburg, York County. Yeah, York County. Shout out it's so hey, it's some good basketball in, in Richmond, man. Oh, absolutely. Richmond, shout out. Richmond, I mean, hey, they hold it down. 
That's Central Virginia. That's where my guy up there, you're going to meet him soon. That's a friend of mine up there, Tom Carmichael. And I talked to you about what he's doing for us down in Virginia Beach at the Plex. But uh, he's run a lot of phenomenal events, uh, basketball and football. And I worked at the Battle to the Hoops with him down in Saint, at Petersburg High School. Uh, we had a phenomenal time down there when Frank Mason was there, Kansas and uh, Frank Mason, he's a team loaded guy. That is a team loaded guy, absolutely, absolutely. But you're gonna meet Tom, he's got that whole central Virginia area, uh, uh, right there. And that's something we're gonna do some nice things up in that area too, Jamar. Uh, oh, listen, shout out when you said Smithfield to uh, to coach Keith Good, appreciate me, good. Good. my guy, man. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have probably met Boo Wins at the time I met Boo Wins if it weren't for Coach Good. Yeah, that's that's my brother for real. And yeah, real when you life. told me that, I was like, man, this is do we need to capture another picture moment? I was like, wow, that's I mean some deep history there. No, nah, that's my guy. He he supported. He actually first AAU team I ever coached was because of him, the Suffolk City Running Rebels. Um, we coached that team. They was like eighth graders. I think we had out of the eight or nine guys we had on that team, four of them went on to go play college basketball. Raymond Wright uh, is at Virginia Union currently. Jerry Goodman is at Fairroom College. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody else. It's two more that play. Mike played a year. You know, somebody else is passing me by. I'm, I'm getting older, man. My memory, I, I got to see pictures to remember stuff. Be like, no, our short-term memory ain't the greatest. I can remember stuff back, man, so long ago. But my short-term, I might forget it the time I get out the door. <laughs> yeah. And, and before we get off here, uh, let me let me just say something to the community, sure. the basketball community in the 757. Um, one of the things I really want us to do is just come together more, take the egos out of it you know and, and let's do it for what we say we do it for and that's the kids and do it the right way man no matter what your brand affiliation is your organization do what you're supposed to do by these kids man stop stop chasing the clout do don't be afraid to be disliked do it the right way do it the real way get these kids to the next level man I appreciate you sharing my piece that's what it's all about y'all heard that doing it the right way helping these kids, you know, tell them the right thing. You know, with me, it's about, and we the same way. It's about fit. You don't want a kid going to a school just say, oh, where I'm going because of this particular name. You go to a school where this school is going to be a good fit for that particular kid, not just athletically, but first and foremost, academically, as well for his family. People don't have to remember that. It's all about family as well. And, and that's what we always talk about. But I appreciate you sharing that. Listen, you guys, I'll keep you guys abreast of who will be the next guest coming up. You know, you never know who you're going to see on straight from the source. But uh, we growing. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. And again, listen, shout out to my wonderful guest, Coach Jamar Simmons. And listen, the wonderful things that he's doing and been contributing uh, for years for our youth, uh, not just in the 757 Hampton Roads community, uh, but he's been sharing his love and his knowledge of the game to young boys and young girls all over the world. We appreciate you being here, Jamar. I'll talk to you soon. Peace, Godspeed, brother. Peace, Godspeed.